And good morning, welcome to Today at the Races here at Laurel Park, sponsored by our good friends at Fidelity First. I'm Stan Salter, odds maker Keith Fustel here, yeah, getting yeah. you ready for a three-day race weekend here at Laurel Park. And we saw our good friend Dan Eubanks from Fidelity First at the MTHA Christmas party this past Tuesday night. Good crowd, as always, at one of the best Christmas parties around, thanks to the, all the good folks at the MTHA, David Richardson, Tim Keefe, some uh, nice award winners there. It was a nice party. Congratulations to Kieran McGee, the uh, MTHA Trainer of the Year, Mrs. Ellen Charles from Hillwood Stable, Tim Ritlow, honored for all his contributions here to Maryland Racing, backstretch award winners from Rodney Jenkins Barn, Mary Epler, a bunch of scholarship winners. It was a good night, mm -hmm. good carryover in the rainbow pick six today. It's a little chilly, but no yeah. wind, so that's a bonus. Yeah, we got some help, and whoever got us this heater, <laughs> go, go get that guy a couple cocktails on me. I, that, this thing feels good. I know you don't see it, but uh, we need it today. I'm driving down, I think it's about 20, 25 degrees. So uh, thank goodness uh, we've got a little bit of heat down here in the, uh, in the paddock. You were watching a movie last night. Remember? Yeah, I was watching Dumb and Dumber, Jim Carrey, <laughs> in a scene that's, that you and I stand riding a little 50cc mini bike out in Aspen, Colorado. This is what it's like right now uh, in Laurel. So, yeah, we're, 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 we're dealing with the elements. We're fine. We're tough. We can we're, we're, just, we're getting uh, warmed up for the yeah. Winter Carnival uh, weekend in February <laughs> yeah, here with right. the uh, that grade two Barbara Fritchie and General George. Oh, so I have the Rosecroft yeah. jacket on here. Now let's, go, let's go over here. I get the Laurel Park hat on over here. Rosecroft wrapped up its fall meet last night. Exciting night down there. Russell mm -hmm. Foster, Roger Plant, your leading drivers, Brian Burton, leading trainer. And I'm um, sporting, uh, sporting the Craig Sager gloves oh, today here. Good yeah. guy in TV. Lost him too soon. I had no doubt. I mean, he was just the consummate professional. I mean, everything you, you know, watched last night, I know if you're not an NBA guy, but he covered all sports. Everybody's yep. so complimentary. The man, what a fight he put up uh, against cancer. And, uh, you know, if, if we could kind of mimic him, in our life, we'd be doing okay. If there was a lot of people like him, we'd be all right. The Sports Center did a, a Sports yeah. Center did a nice tribute to, to him, and I believe he covered some horse racing oh, yeah, in his career. For, Forty years on TV, and uh, well, he said he slept overnight, right, with Seattle Slough. So yeah, yeah I think yeah. yeah, spent the night in a stall. So uh, yeah, he, he he covered it all and, and did it all. Really, really sad. It's been a tough week. Had a lot of people pass this week. It's been, been a tough go. Yeah, Garrett Gomez, mm -hmm. uh, sad situation yeah. out there. Of course, he started his jockey career here in Maryland as an apprentice rider. Yeah. And uh, uh, Joe Miller, beloved employee yeah. here at the Maryland Jockey tough Club. Week. So our thoughts and uh, prayers to them and all their family uh, as we uh, get ready for the race weekend here. So sporting the Craig Sager uh, gloves here on a, on a nice brisk Friday uh, yeah. afternoon. Also, uh, uh, colors uh, talking to Mary Epler uh, yesterday. We were okay. going to do a nice press release on her. She's the current leading trainer. Mm -hmm. And we were talking about the 80s and everything. She won her mm -hmm. first couple races back in 1980. Of course, she started here at Sagamore Farm, worked for the Hall of Famer, yeah. Buddy Delt, uh -huh. as well. So uh, I was thinking about the 80s and everything. You'll remember the owner, uh, Howard Wolfendale's owner, Rocco J. D'Amelio. Yeah, you got it, right. With the, with the pink and uh -huh. black colors. Yeah. That was kind of the owner that put, put Howard on the map. Mm -hmm. They were rolling back in the 80s. Mm -hmm. I remember them. So, yeah. all right, let's get right to it. Lots of good stuff here this weekend. Fantasy football pick seven yeah. starts today. It starts today. You can enter up there on the second floor of the clubhouse in that new sports bar. That's the place to be up there, that new sports bar. Uh, you can enter today, tomorrow, or before the 1 o'clock game on Sunday. There's $2,500 in that fantasy football pick seven. It's a free entry voucher when you buy a program or a racing form. So ask somebody about it. Go to guest services or go up to that new sports bar on the second floor. Check out the fantasy football pick seven. They had the NFL Sunday ticket every game, every Sunday up there at the new sports bar. That's where they had the Christmas party this past uh, Tuesday night. All the new TVs you can want in there. Huge bar, nice bartenders up there. And uh, we're going to have some uh, New Year's Eve and New Year's Day racing here at Laurel Park. A bunch of stakes on New Year's Eve day. That's a Saturday, yeah. uh, but don't get tired out because New Year's <laughs> Day, always a big day out here yeah. at Laurel Park. That'll be on Sunday this year. We're going to need a couple days to recover after that. <laughs> okay, are we going to be able to make it through? We'll, uh, we'll get through. We're running through Christmas <laughs> weekend, too. We run oh, yeah. a Christmas Eve. Saturday, we're off uh, Christmas Day, but then we'll have yeah. a special holiday card Monday, the day after Christmas. Uh -huh. And speaking of Christmas, if you haven't done all your Christmas shopping yet, there's one of the best presents you can get all your friends and loved ones. Tickets for the 142nd Preakness Stakes, the middle jewel of the Triple Crown. Tickets on sale now. All the seats sold out last year. Uh, so to get your tickets now, Go to Preakness.com or call that number there, 
8042. The Preakness Ticket Office will hook you up for the third Saturday in May. Get your tickets now for the 142nd Preakness Stakes. What else we have going on? Let's check out the right. leading uh, jockeys and trainers here. It's just a couple more weeks left of this long fall meet. We started back mm -hmm. in September, yeah. and there's the leading jockeys, Javion Toledo. He just keeps winning and winning and winning. He was a leading jockey for the whole year, 2015, and he has a nice sizable 14 win lead going into uh, the uh, a few more weeks to go. Yeah, it looks safe in his, his mama's arms, it looks like, right? <laughs> he's just, he's just, he's not looking back. Uh, have, you know, he's doing a good job in Trevor right there. But, you know, a lot of really good confident riders here. It's, they're very competitive. I know each in their own right. And uh, you feel a little bit confident when you're putting the money down. Some of these guys, they may really, some of these rides these riders have given of late. Even the younger riders, I commented uh, about one of our, our young girl riders here that had to deal with some adversity, uh, traffic on the turn. Just uh, the, the way they're handling themselves uh, right now, it's, it's good to see. And, yeah, you see Kevin Gomez down yeah. there in the top five. He just finished his uh, bug career earlier this fall, and he's hanging right in there in the top five in a tough veteran jockey colony uh -huh. here in Maryland. Let's take a look at the leading trainers. How about Mary Epler? She started back in 1980, won two races back then. Uh, she's the leading trainer right now. Four wins over Hammy Smith with a couple weeks ago. If she can hang on, I'm rooting for her. She'll be the first woman to ever win a training title here at Laurel Park. Wow, uh, that's, uh, that's huge. And But I tell you what, these guys right behind them, Hammy, Gary, Hugh, Lacey, Kieran, they're, they're not letting up. No, they're you know, on. No, 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 they got her in her sights, and they're right. going to try to go by late. There's Abs no doubt about it. Absolutely, and talking to Mary yesterday, mm -hmm. she's, she's well aware of that. She mm -hmm. says, I haven't won anything yet. She knows Hammy and Gary, yep. Hugh McMahon, Lacey Galdette, they're all loaded for bear mm -hmm. with a bunch of uh, sharp horses in their barn. So it'll be uh, interesting, uh, be interesting uh, to seeing these overnights here for the last couple of weeks, seeing the horses that these top trainers get in. Mm -hmm. uh, Mary Epler, she has a four-win lead, and uh, her, her uh, big horse, Paige McKinney, he's back on the work tab over there at Pimlico uh -huh. with a few works, doing well. So, uh, knock on wood, we'll see uh, the millionaire Paige McKinney maybe yeah. uh, later on uh, next year uh, or early, early in the winter perhaps. So, yeah. there's your leading trainers and jockeys. Let's take a look here. Nice carryover today. Rainbow pick six, a little over 8,600. That starts in race four today on our nine race program. Uh, that's the only carryover today, $8,634 dollars in that rainbow pick six ticket i uh, have kind of a pricey ticket today yeah. uh yeah. keith but I, th I think it's worth it my ticket was a 76 dollar ticket today in the rainbow pick six we'll put about five thousand new money into mm -hmm. it today it'll be around 13 14 thousand yeah. in that pool if you can get a couple prices on your ticket you have a good shot if you have six winners i th i still think it's at that stage where if you have six winners you have a good shot of taking no, it down no doubt we see it it's just you know just not quite enough in there getting right. enough exposure you know but these are the days to attack. You know, yeah. it gives a chance. This, even the smaller guys, this is your best chance to go ahead and attack the bet and try to come away with eight, ten, twelve thousand. Well, let's take a look here at the dirt course and the uh, the weather and everything mm -hmm. today. Uh, let's see. There's the uh, there's a picture of the dirt course. Now, last Friday we did have a couple winners down on the mm -hmm. inside. Uh, on the weekend, it kind of reverted back yes. to what we've seen the past few weeks, where the inside maybe not the best place. We have a fast track mm -hmm. today. Your thoughts going into the yeah. the weekend? Same thing. Just, you know, I'm hedging, hedging outside with my selections today for the most part. Uh, but keep an eye on the situation and just see how it goes. Once, once again, bias is a, it's a term that's just thrown out way too much right. in, the, in the racing game. Uh, have we had one here of late? Yes. The answer is yes for the most part. Uh, something you really don't see at Laurel. But monitor the situation, see how it goes. Wait a couple races before you make a real big, you know, decision on how you're going to attack the rest of the card. That's what separates mm -hmm. the, uh, the 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 yeah. sharp handicappers yeah. that make a bunch yep. of big scores from the ones that don't. You have to pay attention, follow mm -hmm. the charge uh, each and every day uh, in, in this game. So uh, we're in the 20s today. Main track is fast, clear, no wind, no mm -hmm. rain. So that's a good thing here at Laurel Park. What else? Um, we showed you everything. Let's get yeah, right let's to get it to here. Opener. Let's get right to it here in the opener. The uh, rolling super high five starts in race one. No carryover in that, but we always have that low 15% takeout in the rolling super high five each and every race with seven or more horses so keep your eye on that throughout the day sometimes you can catch a nice carryover in the super high five race one also kicks off the early pick five the pick fives both of them here at Laurel Park always your best bet carryover potential in that late pick five the early pick fives a mandatory payout both of the pick fives here at Laurel have an industry low 12% takeout I love the early pick five today even though we have that nice rainbow pick six carry 
carry over, Keith. Mm -hmm. My best bet comes in race three today. Okay. That's the Mary Epler horse, uh, the three, I'm sorry, the seven, read all about it in race three. So I'm going to key on that horse, Victor Carrasco board for Mary Epler. Uh, I have a price horse I like here in the opener. I'll go four deep here in races one and two, uh, but my top pick here in race one is the three, run for Zach, Fergal Lynch aboard, nice 10 to one yeah. shot. So there's my early pick five, mandatory payout, affordable $48 play to see my tickets and Keith's early pick four ticket and all our picks and everything go to laurelpark.com. So let's take a look here at the opener. Three and up, never won two lifetime, claiming 5,000, going two turns a mile in a 16th. I think it's a kind of a, it's a soft condition uh -huh. and, it, and it came up a soft field. I'm going to go with an old school trainer, Ed Allard. Uh, we've known this guy for a long, long time. He's trained champions, moms, command, a bunch of other good ones as well. Had a nice stakes horse, a uh, nice three-year-old last winter here. Was that all? Always sunshine, yeah, maybe. Yeah, sprinter, yeah. So when he used uh -huh. to come down here and stable down here in the winter, and he did well, mm -hmm. and it looks like he's still up there at Parks. Uh, what, are, what are you doing, Ned? Come on down here to Laurel <laughs> Park for the winter time. We like you down here, yeah. and I like you here in the opener. Ten, 10 to 1 here on Run for Zach. Had a nice come from behind win mm -hmm. to break the maiden, going five and a half furlongs at Parks. Uh, the first uh, race facing winners, maybe that race was just too tough. That was at the 10,000, right. two life level. That was going short. Now we're dropping to the nickel, two life. We're stretching out to two turns for the first time the dam she was one for five made about 45,000 she did win long on the turf, on the turf and yeah. she was also second in a stake race going long on the turf so the distance is there on the on the dam side I think uh, the uh, the sire awesome of course a young uh, awesome again sire we get Fergal Lynch the third leading rider 10 to 1 I'll take a shot here with strong connections on the three run for Zach mm -hmm. yeah this, this is a tough little race I mean I chalked it up uh, for the most part but I can see run for Zach uh, top side more conducive to speed, it looks like, heading towards speed with Awesome, of course. But as you said, yeah, on the bottom side, that mare did win long uh, on the grass. Uh, playing the way the racetrack's been playing, though, I think the seven, I'm a prankster for Claudio Gonzalez of Barn. It's now three for 13 on the dirt the last 30 days. LR with a positive ROI over $2.50. Uh, I think this horse is sitting at a really good trip in here. Some questionable speed to the inside. I think cool roller from the rail and run for Zach will be forward stand. I don't think I'm a prankster needs the lead. Topped out at its best turf number number last time. I like to get that stamina from the turf race, goes turf back to dirt. We'll stalk and move on with it around the final turn. I respect all that. I like him. I, I use him second in the exact. Looks like we both like the four. Mr. Coupons, uh, Jomar Torres, seven mm -hmm. pound apprentice up here for Juan Carlos Guerra. Uh, this yeah. horse, uh, not a good race last out, but that was for 7,500 mm -hmm. at Parks. We're dropping a little bit here today. Yeah, Barn, it's hit for a really high percentage for a long time, mainly at Parks. Uh, maybe a little bit of mama thrown in. Last time that comes out of a fast race, the winner ran a buyer of 65, pretty solid fig for a 75 two in life was down inside and never ran a lick kind of a grinding type I think he'll you know he'll be behind I'm a prankster he's going to have to catch him late and wear him down I think the seven gets the jump on the four all right nice uh, nice race there and the mm -hmm. opener to kick off the early pick five uh, there in race one race two starts the early pick four Keith has a ticket here for the early pick four, let's go pop that up and take a look here at your ticket. Yeah, everything's going to depend right now on the seven and race two called in sick for trainer Phil Schoenthal. I thought this horse ran great against the grain of the track last time. We're in a single, single to seven called in sick by four by four. Race five, Stan, we're going to go all. $64 ticket, eight horses in race five. I think it's a wide, wide open uh, maiden for two-year-olds, maiden special weight. Nobody really had any great established form, a bunch of question marks with the firsters. Uh, I, I, cost is a little bit too high that I, you know, I don't like giving out a ticket that much, but if we can get by the first leg, uh, you're going to get your money back, I believe, no yeah. doubt. And that, that is a, that's a nice uh, yeah. wide open maiden special yeah. weight there in race five. So I like your key horse, the seven yeah. here in race two. I use that horse a uh, second in my exacto. Let's take a look mm -hmm. at a video here for the seven called in sick. Eight to five morning mm -hmm. line with the 10 pound apprentice. I love the lightweight assignment here of yeah. 108 with Anna Carroll aboard. Yeah, got clear last I'm time. I'm sorry, out. 104, my 10, bad. 104, got in, got, got away well last time, cleared the field and dropped to the inside. Uh, towards the inside really wasn't the best part of the racetrack if we stated time and time again. But I like the way called in sick. She handles the pressure around the turn. There's Michael's butterfly drifting a little bit, came back again last time and I think ran third against the bias. Called in sick here to the eighth pole is trying hard just on the worst part of the racetrack. It draws outside the other speed today. I don't think she necessarily needs it, Stan. Gave way grudgingly right there. I think she stalks and pounces. I mean, she, she could clear it, wouldn't surprise me. I'd almost prefer a stalking position because one thing you have, we've also seen on this racetrack of like speed, it usually doesn't carry, it hasn't carried as well uh, over the recent weeks. 
So all right, I, I like the seven. I love that 108. This horse is in front, turn of her home. I've heard this, uh, this uh, girl can ride pretty well. Okay. Uh, she's working hard in the morning. Mm -hmm. People like her. So if she's in front, uh, uh, turn of her home at 104, this, 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 this filly <laughs> might be over. Uh, grow, grow wings. <laughs> so I like her. I'll, I'll use okay. her second. I'll throw the uh, John Salzman horse on top, mm -hmm. though. Uh, choice prospect, Javion Toledo, aboard this uh, two-year-old filly by noon mark. It was a decent win last June on the slop at Delaware yes. against Maiden 30. Uh, they gave her a couple months off, brought her back in a tough stake up there at Delaware, and that mm -hmm. stake just too much. So yeah. they had to freshen her up since then. They've gone back to the drawing board. Uh, some decent works here at Laurel Park. They bring her back uh, in a reasonable spot here against Open 11 Company. Get the lead and rider, Javion Toledo. Uh, the five to two choice here. Toledo okay. was named on both parts of the entry. Both parts of the entry yeah. stay in. Kevin Gomez will ride the 1A next street. Toledo picks the one choice prospect here. Yeah, choice prospect could be the speed. Uh, you know, Salsons, we've seen them do it time and time and go to the sales, get horses for cheap, yeah. and, and really kind of outrun their, their price tag. And this one was showing a little bit of promise that she just kind of tailed off, freshened up. You see that on the bottom, 61 to 180 days off a of layoff. Salsman Barn, uh, seven runners for 43% with a positive ROI. That's dangerous. I, I think this horse is kind of an all or nothing type. I, I definitely fear choice prospect. I'm hoping Calden Sick can just kind of measure her and, and, and go by around the turn. So I'll go 7 3. I think Cherokee Lightning in a race that's got some speed in it, it can benefit from that last race. A little rider change, this horse can suck up for a piece at a price. All right, let's turn the page here. Uh, race two kicks off the early. Pick four here. Uh, race three is a wild, no, claiming 10,000 Philia mares, never won four, lifetime going three quarters here in my best bet of the day. My key horse on this early pick five mm -hmm. from the leading trainer's uh, barn, Mary Ampler, the seven. Read all about it. This horse uh, six for 12 in the money here at Laurel mm -hmm. Park with the win. That win, uh, well, the last win, uh, this horse, um, the last win here uh, it was at Pimlico. That was back in early mm -hmm. June, the last win mm -hmm. in Maryland. Uh, a nice win. We, um, we don't have a video, uh, but that was a game effort with a horse was uh, on the inside, a, a long stretch duel there against Starter yeah. Allowance Company back on June 2nd. Got a nice 61 buyer. It's been freshened since then. A nice bullet work at Pimlico December 3rd, a 5 8 drill, 101 and 2. The barn 27% with a nice mm -hmm. positive ROI coming off the layoff. We get Victor Carrasco. Uh, this horse should be in the best part of the racetrack, stalking from the outside. I think with the scratch of the three, lucky greatness, that takes away some speed yeah. to the inside. There's some other speed horses, but uh, Carrasco should be be able to dictate the pace from the outside. It's going to be tough. Even if he doesn't get it, I think she's going to lay close enough stand to go ahead and, and make a menacing move around the turn. She's run well fresh. You see last year for all from July 5th of 15 to January 8th of 2016 and actually popped one of her best numbers in life. The way the barn's going uh, right now. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and ride the coattails to seven. Read all about it. Seven two cold exactly here. The two Renaissance Rosies from the Jeff Runco barn. This Philly hasn't done much wrong except for the turf race. You take away the turf race, you have three wins two seconds you get the uh, apprentice jan mm -hmm. batista coming in uh for jeff runco um always pretty dangerous when he shows up here in maryland he's philly got a late start to the races and has run well but she's you know off the maiden special weights and the allowance boom right down they've dropped her and kind of squeeze everything i guess out, out of this philly she's got a lot of speed uh you know, apprentice rider who probably will be right on the engine i hear what might be down towards the worst part of the track that she's yeah. going to feel some outside pressure i think from maybe stormy mistress the five and the six williams lucky great Jim your beer has run well overcoming trouble on the turf. This horse can make a run from the back of the pack in more stormy weather. She kind of had a little bit of a rivalry stand with the seven. Read all about it. Overcame some traffic last time. The extra 16th of a mile isn't going to really hurt her chances at all for trainer Pat McGill. All right, I like it. Cold mm -hmm. 7 2 4 trifecta punch there yeah. in race three. Let's get a commercial break. When we come back, today's rainbow pick six starts in race four today. A little over 8,600 in that pick six carryover. We'll start with that when we come back. January 28th at Gulfstream Park, an icon takes flight. The world's richest thoroughbred horse race. 12 of the sport's finest horses. One race. $12 million on the line. Watch Wager Witness. Go to PegasusWorldCup.com for more. Welcome back. Today at the race is sponsored by Fidelity First here at Laurel Park as we get you ready for the three-day race weekend. Nice carryover in the rainbow pick six today. Starts in race four. 
on our nine race program, a little over 8,600. I think they'll put a, a good five, 6,000 new money into it today. If you have six winners, you have a good shot of taking it down. It's a challenging sequence, some tough races. You better spread deep in a few of these races. Try to get a maybe, try to get a price on your ticket. Here's my ticket. I'm going to spend a little bit more today, $76.80 okay. ticket. And my best bet's earlier in the card, so I couldn't come up with a single in this late sequence here. I'll go three deep here in race four. Oh, tough, wide open, 75 to kick things off. I'll use a 358. And then race five is another tough maiden special weight mm -hmm. for two year olds. Going four deep in there, four deep in race six, and then just two deep the rest of the way home. I'll try to try to gut it out there, the final three legs. So let's take a look here <laughs> at the opening uh, leg. Race four also kicks yeah. off the middle pick four. This is a tough, tough uh, classic mm -hmm. uh, uh, wintertime racing mm -hmm. here in Maryland. Open 75, a bunch of monsters in here going six furlongs on the main track. Let's take a look here. We have a video on the pulse. My top yeah. pick here, first off the claim for Kieran McGee today. Yeah, similar to uh, called in six video. We're gonna kind of, it's gonna be an emphasis, you know, something we're gonna pay attention to. You're gonna see probably a lot of these videos when we're going back just to kind of show you uh, how horses handled the inside part of this racetrack over the past month. And the pulse, one of the few horses that really bucked the trend, Stan. And this was a weaker open nickel. I, I've got to give you that. But the way this horse won it, one convincingly was down inside, was guided off the inside at the head of the stretch out to about the two or three path. And, and one, uh, you know, just uh, very impressively, this, this horse it was did what he was supposed to do. Uh, I didn't think he'd be down inside around the turn, but he was, but he did it, took off the rail, beat that kind of field the way he was supposed to. Now, is he going to regress a little bit off of that effort? It was a big effort. You see the number of buyer of 75. Uh, Kieran reached in to grab it off of Lacey Gaudet. I, I liked him at just a little bump up in class, not much, not asking for a whole lot. The pulse will be tough. Some probably very well could be the controlling speed. Right. Cowboy King has some speed. I think he's a little bit better uh, going longer. Um, I don't see anybody else. Classic Wildcat likes to kind of rate in mid-pack. He's coming off a little bit of time. I, I think it's going to be the Pulse's race to lose. Uh, but Showtime is a horse who was favored over Classic Wildcat in the Pulse a couple of races back. He dropped down uh, the second race off of a claim, was claimed last time by Wayne Potts. Yes, he got to the best part of the r racetrack, but he attracts Pimentel, a rider that knows this horse. Uh, yeah. He fits here. I think he, he has no speed. I don't have to worry about him being trapped down to the inside. He can get off the inside and make a, a looping move, a winning move like he did last time. There's a bunch of horses for courses in here, and sometimes mm -hmm. maybe I, I make too much of a, a horse's stats at a particular okay. racetrack. However, in this race, you have to point it out, our top pick here, six for 12, six wins with oh, 12 yeah. starts here at, at Laurel. Your top mm -hmm. pick, Showtime, a nine-time winner mm -hmm. here at Laurel Park. The five classic Wildcat, a 15-time winner here at Laurel Park. So you have a bunch of nice horses mm -hmm. here uh, that have a, a, a stellar records here at Laurel Park. Yeah. I, and, and you've got to respect that. It's a good little race, a tough race. Uh, Classic Wildcat, the way he ran back in October, I guess he needed a little time to recover because that, that was absolutely huge. The, I did not expect that race at five. The one just annihilated that field. I had a little something left in the tank, if I remember. So what's he going to do off a little bit of a freshing? But the pulse managed correctly. Cho time, as you say, I'm going to toss. I have no idea why he was. they ran him a mile on a 16th, two races right. back. He's a dead one-run sprinting type. Uh, I, I think it, he escapes as the best value maybe in this field. I'll throw 12 stone in, into the mix here for Claudio Gonzalez. The last race wasn't too good, but that was against open 16 at Parks. That's a little mm -hmm. tougher race in here. Uh, he's he's dropping from that open 16. He was running good against Allowance Company at Timonium. He likes his track here as well. Might not be on the best part of the racetrack early on. The apprentice yeah. going to have to mm -hmm. uh, maybe find a, 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 a nice running lane turning for home mm -hmm. towards the outside. But I'll throw the 12, uh, the three 12 stone in the in the mix. Like I say, last Friday we got burned because the track kind of reverted. And once yep. again, watch it again. Not necessarily, we're, we're, we're kind of making the generalization come just from what we've seen. So we're thinking that's how it's going to play. It's, it's not gospel or anything. But 12 stone, an interesting type, gets cut in half for price for Claudio Gonzalez, a barn that is kind of heating back up. Okay, a couple tr tricky horses in here as well. The four, Rapid Rouge at 10 to 1. Mm -hmm. Trevor McCarthy, this horse just won an open 62.50 yeah. at Penn for Charlie Alfrock. You get McCarthy at 10 to 1. And also the Mike Gorham barn. They were a little mm -hmm. cold going into last weekend, but they yeah. had a couple nice winners mm -hmm. last weekend, including a long shot winner. And I've seen this yeah. barn get 
get on a roll before. Alex Centron, he's been red hot the past couple weeks. Uh, Centron on the seven. San Cristo, uh, a nice win against Open Nickel Company yeah. last out, uh, stepping up here. So if you can spread deep here in race four, it's a tough open 75 to kick off the rainbow pick six. Uh, I only go three deep using the three, five, eight. Uh, so hopefully we'll try to squeak through mm -hmm. the first leg. Let's turn the page here. Race five, nice, nice maiden special weight for a bunch of well-bred two-year-olds. Six furlongs on the main track. I have a late pick five ticket. Let's take a look here. No carryover, but we always have that industry low 12% takeout on the late pick five. It's a little different from my pick six ticket. I'll go four deep here in race five using the one, three, seven, eight, going with the one, six there in race seven. I'm sorry, race six. Three deep there in race seven. Two deep there in races eight and nine. So an affordable $48 play for the late pick five starting race five here. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look. The eight, Generous Jack, is going to be my top pick. I don't even, I'm, I, don't, I don't look at the breeding okay. here. I forget the breeding. When you see a first-time starter showing up for a good barn with, uh, count them, eight. Mm -hmm. Eight bullet works up there at Fair Hill. <laughs> don't, don't even look at the breeding. Eight works. The horse is working well. Obviously has some talent, and no wonder they attract the lead rider, Javion Toledo, yeah. aboard here. I love the eight-to-one price. I love the outside post this horse gets mm -hmm. for the debut assignment. Kelly Rubley, a good trainer, and does a nice job up there at Fair Hill. K1 Kings, a, a young sire, yeah. uh, has thrown some winners, so mm -hmm. it's not not a dud as a sire. Uh, but what do you what do you make of these eight works up there? Yeah, that's a lot. I mean, prepped and, and and rolling, it looks like. Uh, is she friends with the clocker? <laughs> <laughs> no, I have no idea. I don't know Kelly Rubley, but no. But the mare was three for nine, sprinting around pretty quick, and, and Kelly did have a first time start on the turf. Right. Uh, when going long uh, just a week or two ago. Uh, and I think that horse was back down, I believe. So tab, tab the tote on the, I think this race is just a mad scramble. That's why I went all in, in, in the early pick four. Uh, I look at a horse like the four, E takes the lead for Jerry Brooks. Yeah, he's, he's you know trying to get off the Schneid. His horse has been running okay, but he can't get to the winner's circle. But, uh, you know, runs for 25, but I think just outran what they expected. Uh, the sharp comment is a comment we don't just throw out. Right. Uh, uh, upstairs for Echo Base, Bill and I, visually a uh, you know, strong race uh, by E. Dubai out of a mare that was 11 for 45 sprinting on the dirt that, that, that you know, ran in the 80s. I'll take a shot at a price with the four. I, I, I think you got to give yourself a shot uh, for some kind of value in race five. It's just too tough of a race. Well, that was, that was a big effort at 35 to one mm -hmm. for the for the debut. Yeah. Um, uh, a good step up here, but it sounds like the mare was an old hard knocker mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, might have a nice runner here. You get Cowboy yeah. Steve Hamilton aboard at a nice price. I'll throw the seven in there. This horse might be one of your favorites. Censure, first time starter from the Rodney Jenkins barn by yeah. top sire Blame. Uh, won the Breeders' Cup Classic with uh, Gary. Yeah. Gomez aboard uh -huh. beating uh, Zenyatta. Zenyatta. Uh, they paid a pretty penny for this big boy, 335000 uh down there at the uh, Fasic Tipton Kentucky sale. Yeah. Uh, Jenkins gets his main man, uh, Victor Carrasco. They have a nice outside yeah. draw. Jenkins Carrasco, 21% together from a large sampling. Some nice, uh, good enough works here at Laurel Park for the debut. Yeah. Um, 335000 He's got to be a looker. Uh, Foles, if I, I'm looking, I didn't find a whole lot uh, uh, from a performance standpoint. Um, Blames, yeah, I respect that. I respect the outfit, no, no doubt about it. Uh, gonna, I think going to be a shorter price and get back down. I'm going to use the two Darmaster in there, give that horse another shot, a little bit of an excuse first time out uh, for the Trombetta barn, and and maybe maybe the five Bean Boy. I caught this horse caught my eye the last eighth of a mile on the turf. Another one going from maiden claiming to maiden special weight. Looking back at the breeding, its foals have been most of the work. The best work has been done on grass, but I, I'm going to respect the move here. Maiden second starts. Almost $4 ROI for trainer Cal Lynch. And uh, don't forget about the one Eastern Bay out of a solid producer, Krusicki. Nice race mare as well. She was a mm -hmm. stakes winner trained by Ferris Allen. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's uh, the producer of John Jones. Mm -hmm. So Eastern yep. Bay showing up here, half brother to John Jones. Uh, Rossio yep. Caramano's to board. Uh, might want further down the road. Maybe yeah. a tough inside post for the debut. But John Jones, he could win going short as well. Uh, yeah, and by E. Dubai. I like the other E. Dubai, the four horse. He takes the lead. But uh, the E. Dubai's, they can win early. Right. Uh, there, there's no doubt about it. They can show some speed. They're going to have to get an alert break from the inside. All right, nice, tough maiden special way for two-year-olds yeah. to kick off that late pick five here. Uh, race six kicks off the late pick four. Tough open 15. Claimer going three, uh, going two turns here. Mile on mm -hmm. the 16th. The six Indian red. My top pick. Good second. Second last out and a tough starter allowance up there at Penn. Gets Trevor McCarthy aboard today here for uh, trainer Jamie Ness. Yeah, I wonder if that's a little bit of an inflated fig. The winner ran a 94. Clowney, I, 
Uh, looking back prior, the best fig for that winter, I think, was a 77. Was 13 length, lengths in front of Superfund. I, I'm going to say it was a questionable field, a questionable number. Uh, going to be a shorter price based off of that. I mean, it's pretty glaring, that 89 against this field. Take another shot with Claudio Tribal Honor. Needed the last race. His barn can win second off of a layoff. Will be perched to the outside. Not a ton of speed in this race. I think Boppin and Weaver will go ahead. Maybe Boppin and Weaver is going to be sent out there to set it up for Street Bullet. First time off the claim for Kira. And I think uh, he fits even with a slight little bump up in class. Street Bullet will be rolling late. All right, just realize the time here. We yeah, got carried go away quick. talking about that That's pick right. six and the maiden special weight race, but uh, some nice cards, uh, nice races here today mm -hmm. for a Friday card at Laurel Park. Race seven kicks off the late pick three. Maiden 10 going a mile on the main track, and I'll mm -hmm. go with the hot connections here. Lacey Gaudet dropping the Same seven. Way. Rock Harbor down, turf to dirt. Kevin Gomez aboard. This is an 0 for 13, four-year-old maiden, but he faces the easiest company he's ever seen today. I agree. That race in April was good against Jump Jive and Whale. Was, uh, ran a buyer of 62, a 62, anything remotely close wins this first time gelding for this horse on the dirt yeah uh, so I, I i think rock harbor it might sneak away at a, at a fair price yeah you get six to one kevin mm -hmm. gomez aboard we both like the seven there in race seven lucky sevens i like it all <laughs> right turn the page here race eight nice wide open claiming twenty five thousand. we have open 75 uh -huh. and open 15 and open 20 yeah. uh, i like it here. this is what well, larry abundy style <laughs> racing right all right going a mile on the main track here race eight open 25 let's go with the two conamera Coast, a four-time winner here at Laurel Park. Uh, the last race uh, against a tough two other then. Mm -hmm. He was in front and uh, kind of got a little tired that day. Name changer who won the race came back to win. Yeah. If we can get Conamara Coast back to that uh, uh, effort we saw that's, in July here. He ran yeah. lights out that day and a tough three other then. Got a 92 buyer that day. Let's see if Conamara Coast can get back to, to that form today with Taylor Hole aboard. That, that's the big if. You know, which one's going to show up? He was a horse, you know, the, the July 10th when he won that race. We were all looking at each other in the press box. Right. What what just happened? Uh, I, I don't know. This is a horse who usually, you know, he was kind of a one-run horse at a mile. He liked that. He, now he's showing speed. So I, 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 he's a tough, tough horse to figure. You don't want to get beat by him in your multi-race gimmicks. I think Monkey's Metal is an interesting type against the, uh, the grain of the track December 3rd. A decent little middle move. I think this horse will be poised from the outside. Not a lot of speed in this race. Bluegrass Chad will go ahead and send. I think Big House is going to sit a good trip too, Stan. Uh, I think he fits, no doubt about it. He does not need to lead. Big house. All right, nice uh, wide open 25 to kick off the late daily double here. Another maiden special weight for your races, five and nine. They were split. Maiden special weight for two year olds, three quarters. Uh, tough end of it here in race nine to wrap up the day. The seven black jack buster, a, a strong second in debut up there. Delaware didn't like to slop at all in the second start. Got back in good form. Last out was second to a beast, Ella Reeb, who would come back and win a stake yeah. race. So Pimentel gets aboard today for Scott Lake. Nice outside draw. I like the seven blackjack buster on top yeah he had some sneaky trouble too back september 30th came back to run a good second behind ella reed would have beat everybody else in the field easily you see that he was three legs clear at twin valors run okay make some big middle moves i'll go with a six some kind of magician for trombetta trombetta this is his angle yep. second time starters with blinkers he hits at a really really good rate Source flashed a little speed last time on the turf and was down inside before swinging out the eighth ball. This horse was a little green through the stretch. He had a horse in hand late. So as some kind of a magician, uh, I, I like this move with the blinkers on and going back to the dirt. This horse fits the one spites for Benny Perkins with a, with a very well-bred firster uh, out of a mare that was real strong, a $725,000 earner. That was third in the Black Eyed Susan. Might want a little bit longer. And, and there was a l late breaking uh, change with the okay. six, some kind of a magician. First time gelding Correct. today. Yeah. First time gelding for Mike Trombetta. So mm -hmm. uh, factor that in. So we're out of time. Rainbow right. Pick Six starts race four today. 8,600. I mentioned Larry Bundy's name. I should compliment George Ann Hale, our current racing no, secretary in the you're, racing you're, office. You're in for a beating, aren't not, you? Not nice, yeah. uh, nice <laughs> card today put on by our current racing office. So uh, yeah. nice job. Thanks, guys. Nice yeah. carryover in that pick six to get you going here for the race weekend. You so got it, everybody. Best of luck with everybody. Yep. Rodman coming up next with all today's scratches and changes. Stay warm and good luck.